Hi, I'm David and welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're going to be fitting a 230 volt additional socket in the camper van. And for this we need, obviously, a socket. And I've used the C-line ones here to match with what's already in. We're going to be fitting a back box as well uh, because I actually want to surface mount it where I'm going to fit it rather than actually fitting it into a hole but you would normally fit these into a hole typically and then we've got a little facing plate just to finish it off nicely and we also need some cable um, I couldn't get any stock of uh, cables so I've bought this extension cable which has a suitable 13 amp flex on it which we're going to use and the tools we're going to use are a wire stripper and a screwdriver and we'll also use something just to pull the cable through as well as we go through on that. So let's get cracking. first thing I'm going to do is just take everything out of its packaging. Um, the cost of this was about uh, just over £20, uh, but if we could have got the cable separate it would have been slightly cheaper. So there's the socket. Let's open up the back box now. There's the back box and the socket basically mounts into the back box and then there's the facing plate here. And to finish it off, basically, the facing plate goes on there. And we've got three wires to connect into this. An earth, um, to make sure it's safe. A live and a neutral, uh, which connect on these two connections here. So the live's at this side and the neutral's at that side. It's marked with an E and a ground symbol on that one. The L and the N. And we're going to be connecting the yellow and green wire to the earth, the brown wire to the live and the blue wire to the neutral and then we're going to feed it back. It's going to be a direct connect back to the consumer unit or the power distribution unit and then it's just a single run. You can obviously connect these radially and connect them onwards uh, but in this instance I'm going to run it back to the consumer unit there. Just before we get underway, just remember as well, do not even think about undertaking anything like this unless you feel completely competent in doing it and you understand what you're doing. We're dealing with mains electricity and it's absolutely imperative you do this sort of thing right. So let's step through it now. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I bought an extension lead rather than the actual cable on its own, I'm going to remove the plug for the end because that will come in handy in the future and to do that we simply unscrew the pin in the middle to take the top off. You can see the wiring there and then we undo the three connections. You can of course if you want just cut it off but uh, in this instance it has the plug prepared then if we want to use it in the future and I'm sure it will come in handy. There we go, so that's the plug removed and we'll just pop the cap back on there and then we'll put that to one side for future use. And that plug's got a 13 amp fuse in it. Um, and we'll pop that there. At the other end we've got the uh, socket, so next thing I'm going to do is remove the socket from here. I'm just using a slot screwdriver there, but this one actually flips around and you can use it with a uh, Phillips or Posi drive um, as well. There we go, that's that disconnected and like we did before let's pop this together because it will come in handy I'm sure at some point in the future. Just pop the screws back in there. There we go, pop that to one side, actually pop that plug into it and then it comes in handy. I've just put that on loose and then it's easy enough to open up when we need it in the future. Within this box here, you can see there's a cord grip and uh, just try and put it the right way up it was intended. So I'm going to feed the cord in this way 
and we'll loosen off the card grip again. In fact, what I'm going to do on this one, I'm actually going to take it out. So, there we go. We've taken the uh, card grip out so we can feed the cards through. And let's feed the wire through here. What I'm going to do now is just, just get in the positioning there for when it's tightened up. I'm actually going to loosen it off a little bit now and then just pull it through a little bit more. But I'm going to keep the screws in this time. So it's going to push that card through because we actually need some cable to work with now. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut off the pre-cut ends with the cutters. Make sure you, you catch what you've cut here as well because... Uh, you don't want it getting in your feet um, so we'll do it on that one first so I pushed the wire through and undone the grip screws and the grip just keeps it nice and free there I've also cut the ends off the wires because they'd be a bit tarnished now from where they're being connected and stripped it back be very careful when you strip the wire that you don't damage the insulation on the main cords where you're taking the sheath off earth neutral the blue one live the brown one so what i'm going to do now is just work out how long we need each of them so the connection is going to come in at the at the bottom there so up this way so we need the earth about here so we'll just chop off the excess there and again, make sure you pop the wire straight into the bin so you don't end up with it in your foot. And then the live and the neutral, about the right length. So that gives you a little bit of a view of the length we need for those CBE sockets. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to strip the ends. Let's give it about just over a centimetre. We'll just gently twist to make sure we've not got any rogue strands of wire there. There we go. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some terminators for the end uh, just to make sure that we're not, when we tighten the screw up, we're not actually going through those strands of wires because it makes the wire thinner then and it can end up creating a problem. And I've not got all the right colours for it, so we're going to use this yellow one for the earth, which makes perfect sense. It goes with the yellow and green. And to crimp them on, we use one of these tools. And basically what we do is we pop it in there and then we grip it shut. Normally give it a couple of goes. And then we just make absolutely sure that's on nice and tight. So there we go. I'm going to use this grey one on the positive, on the, on the positive, on the live. Just make sure it's in right because we want to make sure that the plastic covering is just going up to where it goes in, and that we're not crimping the the covering. And there we go. And then we'll do exactly the same again. Pop it in, and then, and I normally give it a couple of grips. And then just give it a good pull to make sure that's not loose. And then finally we'll do the same with the neutral. There we go. And check it's nice and tight. So there we go. We've got that ready to connect up. The earth, the neutral and the live. If you're lucky enough you'll get some brown ones that fit. You can go slightly over, but it's best to stay within the, the sizes for them so it, so it fits well. So next thing we're going to do now, we're going to wire it up. So we'll connect the earth in first, like so. So that's the green and the yellow one. And then we'll tighten that down nice and tight. Now it's imperative we get a really tight connection. Uh, you've probably heard me use the phrase before, loose wires cause fires. Um, because what happens if connections aren't tight and remember you're moving around in the vehicle so if anything's slightly loose um, it'll work its way loose and then you get a bad connection 
and the connection then causes the point where it's connecting between the terminals and the wire to warm up because you get some sparking there which ultimately can lead to a fire so make absolutely sure everything's nice and tight and make sure you periodically check to make sure nothing's come loose so i've got that tight and we'll do a final tighten when we're finished so we now have the neutral on this side to connect up which is the blue one and again just make sure they're pushed in nice and tightly and then tighten it up And then finally, we've got the live to connect up, which is the brown one. And again, just make sure it's pushed fully in because we want a really nice grip on that. Tighten it up. And then just check everything's in nice and tight so that everything's well gripped. So there we go. That's that connected up. So we've got the neutral to the N and the blue one. In this instance, on this side, we've got the brown one to the L, which is the live on this side. And we've got the yellow and green one to the earth, which is the middle one here. So there we go, that's that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna give them an extra Titan to make sure they're not going to come loose. I've got about a quarter of a turn on each then, so they should be nice and tight now. I'm happy with that, that seems to work. So next job, we need to feed this back in, into here and leave enough space and then tighten up that cord grip. Um, so just want to leave it in enough space so that tucks behind. Uh, we've also, of course, got to get in to be able to screw it on as well. So we're just going to put that on loosely for now and just make sure it's sensibly positioned. And just check that goes in before we do anything else. Check then we've got enough space for it to come through. That looks good. So I'm now going to pop that cord grip on lightly just so that we can still adjust it and we'll tighten it up once we've screwed it on. And the card grip goes down that way so that this little, these three ridges here are holding the card in place. There we go. That's just holding it taut for now and we'll adjust it um, shortly. Uh, but we'll need enough space to be able to screw this back box onto the place that we're going to mount it. So there we go, that's as wired up and ready. Obviously remember as well, never have the other end connected up. We're gonna actually work back to the power from here. So let's get on with the next step. So I've just cut that end off there as well at the other end, just it'll make it easier to pull through than having wires sticking out. And we want a nice clean connection again like we did on the other end. We should end up with our socket like that and then we can pop the cover on when we're finished. A tip, don't put the cover on until you're ready to put it on because there can be a bit of a pain to get off. So we've got that ready. We need to remember to tighten up that card grip because it's just on loose at the moment. And then we can go and mount the socket where we're gonna fit it. And then we can screw it in and then feed the wires. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the socket on the back of the cupboard here, which is where I'm choosing to fit the socket. And I've put a little bit of conduit on here, as you can see, just slip that along the wire, just because in the cupboard it might get knocked and it just gives that bit of extra protection. And I've also used a couple of clips that will screw on. So let's get the socket fixed now. So I'm using 16 millimeter by three and a half to fix it on. And the reason for that is, and I'm also using a hand screwdriver, um, is I don't want to actually go through into the wet room. So let me just tighten that screw up now. There we go, that's fitted nice and tight now, but not too tight that we pull the cables out. So next thing we need to do now is just tighten up that card grip, just so it doesn't pull through. 
let's do that now so there we go that's the card grip tightened up just uh, make sure everything then pushes in here and there's a little lip to fix on and now we're going to put some screws in so we'll now pop some screws in So the screws I've used in here are three and a half by 20 and that's given a nice solid fix. So what we can do now is we can pop the cap on. So there's the facing plate. So we'll and that just clips on nicely like that. There we go. One plug installed. So next I'm just going to screw these on just to make sure that we're not going to disturb that cable so there we've fixed it here here and down here stops it moving about then so in order to get the wires through i pulled them through on a bit of conduit but you could use a tape measure or a pulling rod and actually they've come through just down here and then that took us through to the other side um, there's the white wire we've been working with, the mains cable, and I'm just going to pull the rest of that through, but I also pulled a couple of other cables while I'm on for some other jobs. So you can see the cables feeding through there, look. Right, so we've now got the shelves back in. We've got the plug fitted there. Pop the shelf up there. I'm just going to pop the top on here once I've checked everything's all right. Brought my spare cable through as well. See there. Let's give you a quick look box back in and if you haven't seen the one about the shelves I just stuck them on with velcro because it makes it super easy when you need to lift them out but it stops anything rattling around as you can see and there's our plug ready to go cables protected down there fixed on here cut out a little notch in the end of that to make sure it doesn't snag on it we're all right on the shelf because there's actually enough room behind a little bit of a gap there so that's fine Right then, so we've got the cable pulled through now, and next thing we need to connect it up. So what we're gonna do is, and this is the bit where you need an electrician or a competent person to connect it in. I'm also gonna put a bit more conduit on just to make sure the cable's fully protected. So before we remove the cover, we're gonna knock the inverter power off. Uh, via the breaker just in case there's any capacitors charged up so we don't get a shock and we're also going to double check and make sure the electric hookup isn't connected we'll also knock that off as an extra precaution as well so on this setup there's one two three four screws to remove so let's run through now how we're going to connect it up so principally before we start we've got the mains inlet which is the hookup point that connects up into the consumer unit to the rcd and the earth connects to the bus bar out the back of the rcd then there's a bus bar running live and neutral as it's double pole in this one connecting to miniature circuit breakers and the one we're interested in here is the one which connects up to the sockets and what we want to do is connect up an additional set of cables, so a live, a neutral and an earth from the existing breaker that feeds the socket. And we're connecting this to the cable we've just installed, which feeds to the socket we've just installed. Once we've got it connected up, we then need to test it just to make sure everything's working as expected and nothing's come loose out of the install. And you can get these socket testers, uh, there's a number of different types, here's just an example of one. And if you plug it in the socket, the tester will give a visual indication if everything looks wired up correctly and to make sure nothing's come loose. And that's as done then, that's the new socket wired up and connected up. Remember to make sure you get an electrician to connect this up to make sure it's done properly and an electrician will have some proper test gear to make sure everything works correctly and they can test the breakers and things like that also. I hope you found this useful and I'll catch you on the next one.
Bye for now.